there is clearly what's called a change point or a very steep rise in the UK in autism in 1988. And a rise like that is always due to some environmental factor. And what had happened in 1988 was they switched from using animal cells to using the human fetal cells. And what we found was that every time a fetal vaccine is introduced, autism rates go up and they take sharp increases at, at those years. And in the case of the human manufactured vaccines, I realized that there could be very high levels of the DNA from that fetus, which would be made in a natural state. And that's really important to clarify. It's in a natural state, so it's not just DNA. It has decorations, and we call this the field of epigenomics. And <clears throat> those DNA fragments carry very concerning dangers to children who are injected with them. They have the potential to trigger autoimmunity, and they have the trigger to insert into the child's genome and cause mutations. And this information comes from the fields of autoimmunity, immunology, and gene therapy. And there's a huge body of literature that demonstrates how dangerous it is to have those contaminants in the vaccines that we give our children. For whatever reason, they have given the fetal cells a pass without doing any safety studies. It's very egregious. And they do this by getting expert opinions. And the expert opinions will say, well, we don't think that we'll see a mutation, insertional mutagenesis, until we treat a trillion children right, just by doing calculations in their heads. When they did that gene therapy study, they had experts sit around and they said, okay, this could be dangerous. We could cause insertional mutagenesis. But they thought that the risk was one in a trillion. Well, the actual outcome was that four of nine boys developed cancer. So the intellectual, the expert opinions have no relationship to real life risk, and yet they have never done a safety study. The MMR2 that was introduced into the United States in 1980 uh, and into the UK in 1988 uh, is contaminated with fetal DNA fragments and retroviral fragments at levels a uh, hundredfold above the limits that are recommended by the World Health Organization and the FDA. The chickenpox vaccine that was approved in 1995 and children began to be vaccinated with it who were born in 1992. These children are vaccinated after their birth. Uh, that is very, very heavily contaminated. The DNA double strand fragments measured by Merck are two times the level of the chickenpox DNA vaccine. So it's amazing that they would think that the active component, which has activity, right, we have contaminants two times that level that they would have no impact. And then the hepatitis A was introduced in varied states in about 1995 and then more uniformly in the recommendations in 2001. And all hepatitis A containing vaccines are manufactured using fetal cells and are contaminated with the fetal DNA. And then what I think is most curious, and every time one of those vaccines is introduced, there's a very steep increase in autistic disorder. We only look at autistic disorder, and that's because it's the most severe form, and the diagnostic, the DSM criteria has not changed over decades. So no one can argue that it's relaxed diagnosis contributing to this. So we look only at autistic disorder. And that takes a very steep rise every time a fetal vaccine is introduced. And then, in 2008, we introduced the polio uh, vaccine in Penticel. And that vaccine is given to our children at two, four, and six months of age. 
And if you listen to the autism experts out there, they're, they're, they all talk in, in recent years, the last six, seven years, of how much better they're getting at diagnosis. And diagnosis used to be, or onset of symptoms, about 18 months of age, right? Right after they got their MMR and their chicken pox. And now it's come down to about eight to nine months of age, even lower. And the experts all say, well, we're just better at diagnosing. If a parent had a child who was developing normally talking and cooing 20 years ago and suddenly stopped, they wouldn't wait till their child was 18 months old to actually mm -hmm. bring the symptoms to their pediatrician. I think what we're doing is we are giving this to our children at younger and younger ages by injecting them with these fetal manufactured vaccines.